Okay, so I have to stand up. We uh, seriously considered the issue of uh, uh, GMO. Uh, we broadly discussed uh, as a government on the application of uh, GMO. Uh, so because uh, we also support the new uh, protect area to uh, continue uh, it is uh, conservation and the management exercise effectively but uh, we know that uh, as uh, the number the population of the farmer going to increase uh, expansion of agriculture uh, might be a threat in the future for this protected area. So we brought the idea of uh, applying uh, GMO uh, in, uh, in, in, in that area in order to reduce uh, large uh, use of land for uh, maybe small amount of uh, maize uh, production. So if we introduce this GMO, we can minimize uh, the amount of land required to uh, cultivate maize uh, so that in small units of area, we can produce uh, uh, optimum amount of uh, maize which can feed uh, the, the family of the farmers. So we, we've brought uh, the advantage of introducing uh, GMO, one, it increases yield, productivity of the maize in small uh, unit of area, and uh, so that we can ensure food security. Uh, because uh, GMO uh, has uh, uh, qualities of uh, resisting disease and drought and requiring also. One minute. So that, uh, that is one advantage, and uh, we can also increase the income of uh, the farmers by doing so, so that uh, we can also reduce deforestation as a result of minimizing agricultural uh, expansion. We supply freely fertilizers and then seeds. This is also an advantage for the farmers, and then we can also get uh, support from the World Bank uh, if we are able to uh, apply this GMO. This is the advantage. And then maybe we have uh, the concern, even though uh, GMO has all that uh, advantage. The con number one concern is uh, maybe we are going to lose the native uh, maize uh, variety, so which uh, makes make us depend on supplier for, for, for seeds. And uh, we have also a pressure maybe from the environmental group about the health issue of uh, using this uh, MGO and on in the ecosystem as well. Yeah, so in, in general, when we conclude, uh, the merits uh, overweighs uh, the demerits, so uh, this what we The chair thanks the participants from the Ministry of Agriculture and now recognizes the participants representing the tourism stakeholders. Stand up. Okay. Thank you for this opportunity, um, Mr. Minister. Louder. We, Louder. we are here to, to present our proposal as a business group, with, which we think, um, as a country that has a vision for 2035 and 2030, we think um, bringing a lodge close to this protected area is going to improve it gross domestic uh, productivity of the country. Um, we have uh, a number of things that we think can benefit this country. Putting a lodge at this position, we think uh, about 80 people will be directly employed and it's going to cause a ripple effect of creating um, indirect employment for about 500 people in this community. And uh, we have um, tried to look at other aspects into consideration because after listening to 
our friend from the International Conservation Practitioner. So we think that um, we can compromise a number of, of issues. For example, if they are talking about pollution, we are ready to collaborate with the, with the Ministry of Environment and the, the friends from the conservation side to carry out the uh, environmental impact assessment in this, in this area where we are supposed to, to put our lodge. And uh, we think that uh, this initiative is a great opportunity because we are bringing in an international company that is known for good practice, good practices elsewhere. And we, we think that um, this is an opportunity for the Republic to, to be one of the leaders in tourism in this area. And some of the things that we are going to do, we are going to do some of the, we are going to follow the international norms to make sure that the, the community benefits and we take in consideration the understanding of the community. For instance, we think that if we follow the FPIC process, we can build a school somewhere where the community will be able to be improved, community members will be improved in terms of education, and uh, we are ready to spend some other money. Your time is up. <laughs> in, uh, We are ready to spend some other money in making provision for for the community to to turn into a good uh, cattle production system, which is more modern, and by providing a better condition for the entire community. Sure. Thanks. The participants from the tourism stakeholders, and now. Uh, uh, allows the participant for to, uh, pastoralists uh, to air their concerns. Uh, I caution participants that you only have 90 seconds. OK, thank you very much. Within 90 seconds, we, do, we don't agree at all. That's the first thing. <laughs> we don't agree with this proposal. If you give uh, time uh, to present our uh, uh, reason, we can continue. Um, you have one minute. Okay. Uh, the first thing is that um, we agree on the conservation of uh, these birds, but um, what we don't agree is that the, 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 the site was previously our free grazing land, so we had the right to graze our cattle in that area, but now you are uh, the, the park or the protected area do not allow us to graze our uh, cattle. So we proposed that the uh, on the map. Uh, we propose the size the size of the park should be reduced because there is a, a small narrow area which is going up like a finger that doesn't conserve any uh, special species. But it is rather uh, is a barrier to our cattle to go here and there and um, it, it affects uh, it increases the border effect of uh, the park so it should be trimmed uh, down to the shrew um, habitat yeah yeah that uh, that part oh, sorry. Uh, come back and then you use Point this one the green okay. uh, it should be stopped here and the other one, uh, the, this border with the black uh, line should be reduced to this uh, light green area to shrew habitat because uh, the Caracas, this the blue arc, uh, Caracas, it, uh, they are found everywhere. So if the park reduces uh, this area to the shrew uh, area, no special, uh, there is no special uh, uh, bird or animal to be lost. Okay. The other one is the school is far from. Uh, pastoralist uh, uh, area, rather we have six children per family. On the other hand, the farmers have three children per family. So the school should be come around here. And the lodge also should be come around here. It should be in the middle. The school should be near to the pastoralist because we have so many children per family. Thank you. The chair thanks the, pa no, the pastoralist. One, one more, one more. The park should allow, uh, as, as you can see, the 
moisture gradient is uh, there is high moisture around here and it is dry here so the park should allow the pastoralists to graze their animals during the drier period at least uh, on the border uh, on, on the buffer zone thank, thank you, you. Uh, the chair now recognizes the state practitioners for their comments and the chair issues a second warning regarding time limits. If we can't have our full 90 <laughs> seconds, we're, we're, com we're completely willing to walk out of this session. <laughs> I'm sure we can all agree on 90 seconds. And the 90 seconds begin when we begin speaking, not when you begin speaking. I, I agree. Okay, thank you. Okay, y y yes, sir. okay. <coughs> Uh, as a state practitioner, we are worried for both the conservation at the same time for the local community. But the area is very crucial for tourism, as tourism is one source for economical development. So, of course, we are worried about the community. So, we are working for both things. When we come to specific to this uh, plan, uh, the pastoralists propose the green, one, one. green one. The green one. Okay. Propose to use this area at the same time to grade on this area, but uh, as uh, if they just approach here, uh, there will be the conflict between the pastoralists at the same time the Caracas. Rather, we are proposing to increase uh, the, the part of the. Uh, map of this area to up of this because uh, if this pastoral use this area there may be a conflict so there is a uh, reduction of cattle and it significantly affects the cattle population so we are worried about that at the same time and the conflict at the same time can significantly affect the tourism development so this area should be increased some part we totally agree uh, the location of the, um, the school with the pastoralists because this area should be accessible for this community at the same time for this, for this. So maybe one school may not enough for this. Uh, so uh, we are proposing this uh, pastoralists should be restricted up to the river because they need water source so they have to access this area the water resource but they, their grading area should be restricted up of that so it can reduce the conflict with the caracas at the same time the conflict with the uh, farmers here so this is very significant economic and economical development both uh, pastoral at the same time the farmer for the tourism just a quick footnote yes, certainly is that we found 1,220 scientific papers that refer to livestock caracal conflicts. And so we're quite concerned about what's going to happen to the caracal populations in these areas where they're in close proximity to livestock. Chair, sure, thanks. Uh, um, uh, the participants are cautioned to save discussion until the open debate. The chair now recognizes participants from uh, the, the, your local, right? Local the local conservation practitioners. Please stand. Why did the chair just replace the local practitioners? Why? Why did the chair just slight the local uh, I think there might be miscommunication here happening between the chair and other participants. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you have yeah. 90 seconds. Well, thank you so much. With the local conservation practitioners, we are mainly prioritizing uh, conservation of the shrew because it's sacred to the local farmers. So we are very comfortable with the proposal. Why? Because for the shrew, besides it being uh, sacred to the farmers, it is also a very important element in the food chain because some other animals feed on the shrew. And uh, the shrew is an insectivore, so it eats some insect base that would be disturbing farmers. So it is uh, viable. Mm -hmm. Secondly, uh, <coughs> the shrew, the shrew habitat acts. It acts. It was a buffer before for the weaver habitat. 
So the proposed area for conservation will add the buffer to the shrew habitat as well. So that will increase the area for conservation and in the long run other, other biodiversity will be conserved within the area. Then thirdly, the, 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 the shrew, uh, the, 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 the conservation area for habitat for the shrew also encompasses uh, the caracal sighting area. So that's added advantage to conservation. And then uh, uh, it also encompasses Lake El Emily, and you know Lake provides water for both plants and animals, and for other birds, mainly the migratory birds, they can also settle there and as they continue their journey. Then lastly but not least, it's also a catchment area for river. Wide, and yeah. And so we agree with the proposal to extend the protected area. The chair thanks the participants from the local practitioners. Last but not least, no, uh, penultimate, um, we have participants from, which ones are you? Ministry of Tourism. Ah, from the Ministry of Tourism and, and Wildlife. Okay. Thank you, moderator. Uh, we are very happy to be a part of this discussion. Louder. Louder. Up, okay. Um, as representatives from the ministry, we are really happy about the pro proposed uh, protected area because it's, it's based on, uh, on very good scientific data and, and the location is very prime. And uh, we actually commissioned uh, a review of the existing conservation area network and we believe that an addition of this network will, uh, of this protected area will make it even better. So uh, as you all know, the tourism is one of the four pillars of our vision 2030 for, for national development. So we are really happy and we are mobilizing a budget of at least 15% for uh, every year for the next five years to be able to realize this. So uh, we are going to undertake a stakeholder analysis and needs assessment because we realize that um, there are a number of groups that are represented in the area. And uh, based on that then we'll convene um, a consultative forum, a workshop, in which we will discuss all the, all the issues, policy needs, infrastructure needs, training and capacity for us to be able to establish this 